right, for math today, I just want to quickly review. What's an algorithm? Do you remember what an algorithm is? It's those steps that we use to solve a problem, right? How is the algorithm for addition similar to the algorithm for subtraction? Well, they both have a lot of steps, right? And they both start in the ones spot. Awesome. I don't know why it says rounding and it shouldn't say that too. Oh, well, I make mistakes. So today, what we're going to do is watch a video to kind of review the algorithm. And we're going to do notes and then some practice. And then we'll go on to homework. So let's start with that video. Subtracting across zeros. I got a quick little video that's going to talk about what to do when we have a whole bunch of zeros in our problem. Let's take a look at it. Not there either. No. Got enough for you. Come on in. Now what we're gonna do is start to borrow one from there. That becomes eight thousand. We're gonna bring that next door. So now we have ten hundreds. So we have 900s. We're going to take that next one and bring it next door. We're going to keep borrowing and bring it until where we need it and all the way back to the start. Now we can subtract. Yay! <laughs> I don't know what that guy is. But now we know how to subtract through. And I know that was kind of fast, but the big thing was you had to keep going next door and then keep coming back through each spot on your way back. So let's take a look at our notebook page. All right, so we've got subtracting across zeros. I'm gonna zoom in on mine a little bit more. All right, so we're gonna start on this page and this page will be practice after, okay? So we're going to use number sense and regrouping to subtract from numbers with zeros. Do you know what it's called when you name a whole number a different way? You might not have heard this before. Or you might have, but you didn't realize that this is what it means. Regrouping is used to name a whole number in a different way. We can always talk about it as borrowing, but we're really renaming, we're regrouping our numbers to make them a new number. So for example, like if we have 110, we could regroup that to be 10 ones. We could have 100, and we can regroup that as how many tens, do you know? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. It would take 10 tens. So now I have a little bit more of a challenging one. I have two tens and two ones. Let's first think through what number is that. Two tens and two ones is 22. So I'm trying to think, what could this be the same as? One ten and how many ones? Well, I knew one ten was the same as 10 ones. So if I take one of my tens and give it to my ones, I add 10 ones to my two to make 12 ones. What about 306 tens? What number is that the same as? 306 tens and no ones is 360. I'm going to do that same kind of thing. I notice I go from 300s to 200s. So I know 100 was the same as 10 tens. So instead of six tens, I'm going to add ten more. So this should be 
16 tens. Awesome. Mrs. Wells is going to do two examples and then you're going to have some work time, okay? So let's look at 63,000 minus 48,673. First thing I need to do in my algorithm, remember, is stack up my numbers nice and neat. Minus, and I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to line up my ones, my tens, my hundreds, my thousands, and my ten thousands. All right. So now I'm going to go through and start subtracting. Zero minus three. Oh, no. We can't do that. So let's link back to, like, that video. I remember they tried to go next door. But we can't go next door. That's a zero. Let's go next door. Oh, that's still a zero. All right, let's go next door. Oh, finally, somebody's home. We can borrow from him to regroup. So now instead of zero, this guy becomes 10. But we have to keep going back all the way over here. So we have to borrow now from instead of 10, he's nine. And that group comes next door. Now we have 10. And now he's got to borrow and come next door. And now we have 10. All right. I think we can finally start subtracting. 10 minus 3 is 7. 9 minus 7 is 2. 9 minus 6 is 3. And then we have our comma spot. 2 minus 8. Oh, no. We can't do that. Luckily. Our neighbor has some. We can regroup uh, and we can make this uh, 12,000 instead of 3,000. 12 minus 8, let's see, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 4 and 5 minus 4 is 1. So my difference was 14,327. Let's do one more practice problem together. Let's set up our problem first with 30,220 minus, I'm going to try it this way this time, lining up my thousands, four, and my comma, one, one, six. All right, so zero minus six. I can't do that. Luckily, my neighbor next door can help, so I just have to go one spot this time. Woo! 10 minus 6 is 4. 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus 1 is 1. I'm into my thousands, so I need my comma. 0 minus 4. Oh man, there's more on the floor. So let's go next door and get 10 more. So now 10 minus 4 is 6. And 2 minus nothing is 2. Remember, I can always do the inverse to double check my work too, just in case uh, I feel like that wasn't right. To, um, and I'm going to pick the 4,116 to add back into. 6 plus 4 is 10. That's 2, 2. 6 plus 4 is 10. <gasps> and it was the same smiley face. Yay! All right, so you are going to work on these problems. Four of them are already stacked for you. Two of them are not, and you need to stack them. There's some with a lot of zeros, especially next door. So be careful, okay? And unpause the video when you're ready to see your work. All right, let's take a look. All right, number one, you should have got a difference of 528. Number two had a few zeros, and you needed to regroup a lot. So make sure you got 80,018. Number four is 443,061. You needed to regroup a lot there, two zeros in a row. Number three it was just subtracting, but you needed to borrow a lot. 1,757. Number five, you needed to stack up. And you should have got a difference of 960. Notice I just put my equal sign at the end and wrote my answer down below because there wasn't a lot of room between them. 
Same with number six, I wrote equals, and I kind of wrote my answer there. You should have shown your work, though. I got a difference of 146,179. Remember, you can always pause the video if you need more time to correct your work. All right, so for your homework, you have page 75 and 76, numbers 1 through 10 on the front, and 15 through 19 on the back. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, have fun and good luck.